Hi guys, welcome to another Projection 3D video tutorial. I think beginners will find this tutorial particularly useful because right now we're going to create some very basic, very simple animation. So let's start with a straightforward projection. So I'll go ahead and drag this image to the timeline and press find camera. Then I'm going to match the camera. So for that I'll select camera tool. All right, that's enough. Now click here to show hidden layers, select helper grid and press S to open scale parameter. Disable scaling on all axes and scale the grid along the X axis. Okay, great. Now hide hidden layers, select camera and image and click create projection. Make one copy. Well done. We now have a projection scene. Now, to create the field, the mountains and the sky, we will use Create Solids using Helper Grid Properties option. This option copies the position of the grid and creates planes. So choose the size you need. In our case, we'll need the bottom and the back. Bottom for the field and back for the mountains and the sky. Click OK. Cool, we're done modeling. That wasn't too difficult, right? Now let's animate the camera. So press P and add position keys. And now go ahead and create some movement using camera tool. Great, it's done. Now let's pre-render. So I'll press zero. Well, it looks like this scene is ready and, and it looks pretty good. Well, that was pretty easy. So let's try and use this method on another image. So drag image to the timeline and press find camera again. Using camera tool, adjust the camera. like so. Then select image and camera and click create projection. Make one copy. OK, disable left side and click OK. Great, stretch the back side a little to cover the whole thing. You can also tilt it forward to make clouds move. To do that, open Anchor Point Editor and move Anchor Point to the bottom. Now tilt it. Okay, that's enough. Let's animate the camera. Add keys and create a movement. Okay, great. Press zero to pre-render. Enjoy the result. That's it. Okay, let's complicate the task and create another scene. So let's just drag another image. Click Find Camera, match it. Use Helper Grid and Image Lines to orient. OK, done. Click here to show hidden layers. Select Helper Grid, press S, disable scaling on all axes and reduce Helper Grid by X axis. Using Camera Tool, move it a little bit to the left. And now guys, let's enable the right side of the helper grid. Okay, disable hidden layers, select camera and image and click create projection. Make one copy. Cool, now double click projection scene one. So now we have to create the road surfaces as well as surfaces for the wall of trees and the sky and the distance. 
So the easiest way to do that is to use the create solids using helper grid properties function. Just click OK. That's it. We did it all just like that. So now go to main composition to animate the camera. Click P and add some keys. Then, using camera tool, create some movement. All right, we did it. Let's pre-render and see what's up. Press zero. Looks great, doesn't it? So this is already a 3D scene, not a static image. But now let's add a person to our scene. To do that, go to projection scene one, select bottom plane and generate position for a person. Since this is already 3D, the person must have a position in the scene. Okay, now go to File, Import Images, and get your person in here. Okay, that's perfect. We don't even need to make it bigger or smaller. All right, let's pre-render and see what we have. That's it, it's ready. It really is just great. Well, since this one's ready, let's move on to the next scene. So drag your image to the timeline, click Find Camera, and start matching it. Okay, good. Now select camera and image and click Create Projection. Make three copies. Double click Projection Scene 3. And this projection copy will create a ground plane and a background. So uncheck left side of the helper grid and press OK. Great, we've created our surfaces. In case you guys didn't understand how that happened, I'll remind you that to create and adjust planes quickly, we used create solids using helper grid properties option. All right, so now let's move on to the main composition and animate the camera. Press B and add some keys. Use camera tool to create movement. Okay, done. Now I'll just pre-render this. Okay, great. Like we already have a moving 3D environment. We just need to create a surface for the ball. So go back to projection scene three and let's generate position for the ball. Like so. Since this is no longer a flat image, but a 3D scene, our ball now actually has a position in the field that we need to track in order to place the model off the ball in the right place. And now that we know the position of the ball, we'll just add a primitive sphere to the scene. The primitive's anchor point is in the center, so we need to reposition it. We need to move the model to its place, but we remember that the ball has a position in the field that we generated, and if we adjust the ball by raising it along y-axis, we will then lose the position. So what do we do in a situation like this? We get some help from Anchor Point Editor. I'll check reposition only anchor point option, and I'll then move anchor point to the bottom. Cool. The ball is now where it needs to be. I'll just reduce its scale a little bit. So I'll just press S to reduce the scale. Okay, perfect. Our ball model is ready. Now let's move it to projection scene one. Select the model of the ball, cut it, Go to projection scene one and paste it. Good. Since projection scene three is our 3D environment, the ball should not be there, only the field and the sky. So that's why we moved the ball to projection scene one. All right, now let's pre-render. We can see the stretching ball from projection scene three from behind, so we gotta remove it from there. 
To do that, click Replace Projection Images. So here, I already have something cooked up. I removed the ball in Photoshop in advance and saved it as a separate image. So all those assets are included in this tutorial and you can download them. All right, so now I'll just select this and press OK. See, nothing's speaking from behind. Awesome. Okay guys, let's pre-render and see what we have. All right, that's great. Looks like a finished scene. I think it's basically ready, but let's work on it just a little bit more. Let's model a hole for the ball. So go to projection scene three, First, we need to make a hall on the ground plane. So go ahead and draw a mask. Okay. Now let's change mask mode to subtract. Good. Now when you go to the main composition, you will see a hall. Now all there's left to do is to make the inner surface of the hall. First, as you already know, we must generate position. Then add plane primitive. Actually, we need a cylinder here, but that doesn't matter. The plane will do. So scale it down. Set orientation to zero. Now let's change the position through the anchor point editor. Great, it's done. Let's see it from custom view. See? It's in the right place. Okay guys, we're done modeling. Now let's fix up the scene. Now make sure everything is in the right order. Good. Now cut the bottom layer, go to projection scene 2 and paste it. Okay, cool. Let's check it. So this is our ball. This is ground plane. Okay, here we should replace projection image. Click replace and choose this. Here are the background and the inner surface of the hall. Also, we gotta replace the projection image. I actually removed the grass in Photoshop so that during movement the inside of the hole was kind of gradually visible. Okay guys, looks like our scene is ready. Let's check it out. Okay, looks great now. All right, looks like we're done with this scene. Well, that's it, guys. I really hope this tutorial was useful for you. I try to keep it simple for the beginners out there. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.